Right. Hi, everybody. This is Artie speaking from People Leaders Today. And today we have with us Ross Sparkman. He is Head of Strategic Workforce Planning at Facebook. Hi, Ross. Hi, Ernie. How's it going? Good, good. How about you? Oh, pretty good. Sounds like you're probably happier than I am with uh, Belgium doing so well in the World Cup, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. USA was not even part of it, unfortunately. No, I know. Guys. This part no of the world has not been doing as good uh, uh, football-wise as the rest of the world. <laughs> yeah, apparently. So probably it's not even on television over there. Here, it's it actually it is. It, it is, it is. Um, surprisingly. Yeah, it is. Um, just uh, not as as popular as in other parts of the world. Yeah, I guess so. Well, it's it's hardly the World Series, the World Cup, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> 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 no, I'm kidding. So, Ross, tell us a bit about yourself and what you do at, uh, at Facebook. Yeah, so uh, right now I, I head up uh, strategic workforce planning at Facebook, which uh, basically means that, you know, that I'm helping Facebook and the organization to scale and grow uh, the people side of the business at, at the same rate that we're kind of scaling and growing the platform side of the business. So just making sure that we have uh, the right people, the right amount of people uh, with the right skills needed to help us uh, execute our vision all right that's a very clear explanation of uh, workforce planning definitely mm. uh, uh, a tough sounds like a tough job so so to me it sounds like there's a lot of recruiting in there finding the right people but what other ways do you provide value for for the business what what kind of elements are in there yeah i think the, the easiest way to think about this is that we um, through through data-driven um, insights help reduce the amount of uncertainty um, that the business faces regarding, um, you know, sort of the, our workforce strategy, right? So we, we basically want to um, think about from a data perspective, how, how we're going to grow, how that growth is aligned to the business strategy, what the right size should be. We look at historical trends. We do things like try to predict you know, aggregate attrition levels, um, internal transfer rates, promotions. Um, and, and I guess my team does a lot of the predictive uh, portions of this because, you know, we have a, a pretty solid understanding of what happened in the past. Uh, but in order to really optimize the decisions that, that we're making in the future, we need to have some sense of, you know, what might or will happen. And so that's, you know, what my team does is, is a lot of, you know, predictive analytics to, to help, you know, remove some of the uncertainty um, around how we, we scale and grow uh, our, our people team. That makes sense. So if you weren't there, if, if you and your team weren't there at Facebook, what would be the difference, you think? I think the biggest difference would be we would, we, the way that we would do planning would be a lot more short term, um, narrowly focused in terms of probably less than, than 12 months out. We would do a lot more what we could just call basic headcount planning, which is to say we would probably just take the budget that has been allocated to us for headcount and distribute it across the business. But we wouldn't do as much longer term sort of optimized planning for the workforce, thinking about what this, the right size and structure of the team should be, thinking about where we should be located, thinking about how, how big we should grow and how do we realize sort of um, efficiencies, um, et cetera. So it's, it's a lot more strategic. There's a lot more conversations with business leaders and HR leaders. Uh, there's a lot more sort of scenario planning in the work that we do a lot more consulting and a lot more of, of that data-driven um, component that, that I discussed earlier. So it sounds like you really need to be part of the business, you know, talking with the business, hearing what their needs are. Uh, how do you do that? Because I feel like every time a new HR function is invented or a new project is started, the business is like, are you again with your projects, again with this, again with that? So how do you go about that? Yeah, um, so there, there is that element too. There's a big, obviously, change management component. A lot of it is about being able to go out and influence individuals. The, the main difference, though, that I think that my team takes, as opposed to, to other teams and, and other projects that might sit in HR, is that we do take that sort of data-driven approach. So when we go and speak with business leaders, we are, are analyzing their own data. We are really thinking about more of the business case, thinking about the, the impact of you know, our overall business strategy and corporate strategy on, on the workforce. So we, we don't sort of come into these discussions in sort of a silo or HR for, for HR mentality. We really do think about this as sort of a cross-functional piece of work that is fully dependent on the inputs from, from business leaders and other parts of the organization. So we actually do a, a lot of work cross-functionally, probably spend as much time with finance 
as we do with with the actual HR leaders. Yeah, that makes sense. And when you were having those conversations with business, one of the hard things that always strikes me about workforce planning is how do you predict the future, right? So mm -hmm. what kind of questions do you ask them and how do you structurally get that data from them? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. It's, it's more around having them, we use historical data and we use kind of advanced algorithms. We use a lot of time series analysis, regression analysis, uh, and build statistical models um, that are all based on historical data. I think that what we what we need in terms of input from the business leaders is sort of a sense check on those baseline numbers. So you know the statistical models will give us a baseline that is useful then to take to business leaders to say, hey, this is what the statistics are telling us. Is there anything in here that might be happening in the future that's not captured in these kind of statistical models that allow us then to, to look at you know, different types of scenarios that are built off of sort of that baseline. All right, and can you give us an example of, let's say a business and something you would identify with data? Because I think a lot of the listeners are thinking, all right, so what, where do I start? <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a good example of um, sort of what we, how we would kind of approach this in, a, in a, another company that I worked for. Uh, when I worked at GE Aviation, we, we used business drivers a lot. And a good example, a really salient example of, of a business driver would be, the, and I work for GE Aviation will be sort of the number of engines manufactured, right? And I would go back and historically look at how many engines have been manufactured each year historically. And then I would look at how the, the size of the workforce changed historically or how many people we were hiring. Uh, and then start to develop a model that would then plug in our future growth projections in terms of how many engines we were planning to manufacture into the model that in turn spit out sort of a number of, of required heads. Right, and then we can kind of say, okay, well, we know that historically, for every five engines we manufactured, we hired, you know, two people, something like that. And so we can establish a relationship, and then say, in the future, we're going to be, we, you know, manufacture ten engines. We then have some sort of output for us to do the modeling around. So it's it's about working with business leaders to understand what are are the drivers in the business that have the ability to impact headcount growth or retraction, um, or might require different skills might require different experience levels, et cetera. And it starts with just having some, some of those, those broad discussions and then taking, taking the tools and, and the outputs that we, that we have or taking the tools that we've developed uh, and sort of creating statistical models that we can then use uh, to make decisions. Yeah, and I definitely get how you could do that in an um, environment that, that's quite deterministic in a way that uses job titles, et cetera. Within the mm -hmm. agile environment that Facebook is, that requires a lot of multidisciplinary teams and people. How do you identify the skills that you have, the skills that you need? That's that's that must be difficult. That's that's, a, that's very difficult. That's something that's, that's ongoing uh, at Facebook. We kind of break, I guess, at Facebook down into sort of two different types of segments: more tactical roles and non-tactical roles. We go through a big sort of activity um, with. Uh, you know, cross-functional partners, HR and business leaders to identify sort of which, which roles are tactical and what kind of make, constitutes a tactical role with sort of the core skills and which roles are not tactical and, and do a lot of modeling um, just sort of based on tactical versus non-tactical roles. But we are finding, though, as we mature and as technology continues to advance and our business models becomes more aspirational in terms of some of the things we want to go after in the future, that there's a lot of skills that uh, may not be in existence today that we have to think about uh, and so those types of activities really involve um, some sort of, you know, probability-based model where we think about, like, what's the probability of this type of skill set being something that we actually require? Um, you know, where where would we locate it? Is it something that even exists today? Is it something that we have to develop on our own? Um, is it something that we have to go and develop partnerships with universities to start to have new course content developed? So it's, it's really about um, asking a lot of questions and then trying to uh, based on your certainty well, in terms of the answers that you have, making decisions and, and sort of uh, pursuing different, um, different strategies based on those decisions. Yeah, and, and does that mean that you have a full taxonomy of all the types of roles you have at Facebook? Yes, we do have a full taxonomy of all the different types of roles. Um, and, and we kind of segment them out to two different types. But I think there's a lot of ongoing discussion right now and a lot of the work that my team is doing around uh, you know, understanding if that ta taxonomy is right. Because I think that what we're finding is if a taxonomy like that wasn't developed when we were initially getting into strategic workforce planning, there can be some misalignment. So that's definitely something also that I actually recommend doing 
uh, for organizations that are thinking to get into strategic workforce planning, which is to say that you should go out and ensure that you have common um, definitions for, for job profiles, that you truly do have a good understanding of what skills are encompassed, and that you can sort of prioritize um, which of those profiles uh, have a larger impact on the business um, for planning purposes uh, and others. And of course, one single person has specific skills, but the success of a business and of a project, whatever, depends on the combination of personalities, the combination of people. So do you do that on a team level as well? We don't do that yet, but I think that's something that um, I think is absolutely important and probably would be something that could be in scope in, in the future. It definitely, that definitely makes sense. And I, you know, if you think about truly a holistic approach to optimizing for team, that is definitely an element that you want to consider also. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And all of this, obviously, since Facebook is very data driven from the start, and um, let me put it this way, not a lot of HR departments are there or have that you know, natural capability. So, so what would you say um, if you were working in a company that had you know, a hundred year tradition, that had uh, not the amount of data that you had, where would they start? Yeah, I think to be to be perfectly honest, I think that there's a process. If you're looking, if, if an organization is starting to look in, into becoming more data driven in their in their people function, I think that it's really imperative to kind of go through a through a sort of a four step process. Uh, the first part or, or foundational component that is really imperative to have, have addressed and thought through is what the actual vision is for this team or or individual that will be taking this work on. What what does the company hope to achieve? by being more data driven with this people data. Okay, so it's, it's really important to have thought through and fleshed out that vision because depending upon what the answer is to that, how the, that team is structured in terms of the skills on the team to do the analysis, the processes and the technology and data that are required to, for, for that vision could change. So if you wanna go really, really basic, start simple, okay, then it's, it's, the vision's probably gonna be more simplistic. If you are super aspirational and want to get to a point where you are truly driving predictive insights and, and trying to predict what will happen in the workforce tomorrow, the type of skills you'll need in the team and the processes and, and data flow uh, will be likely more sophisticated or complicated. So that's the first part is understanding the vision. And then the second piece is based on that vision, we really need to be able to understand what are the skills and who are the people that we want or need on the team to be able to execute that vision. So again, if we're thinking about something that's really sophisticated and ambitious as our kind of end state, then we'll need the people on our team that have the skills to actually be able to, to drive that value. Once uh, you, know, you sort of have an understanding of the vision and what people will be on the team or the skills required, then it's time to think about the processes. How will you scale the insights? How will stakeholders know that they are getting the most up-to-date data? How will stakeholders know who to ask for the data, et cetera? So, Thinking about the processes in terms of the delivery, in terms of the operating rhythm, in terms of who the stakeholders are and who the stakeholders aren't is really imperative. So having thought through that. And then finally, the data piece and the technology piece that you just mentioned. So ensuring that you have a good understanding of what data are available, uh, what data are not, uh, what data uh, need to be cleaned up. It's really important that you go through some sort of an exercise to assess sort of the the cleanliness of the data, are there missing observations? Are the definitions agreed on and consistent? Are the data consistent, et cetera? So understanding the limitations and, and opportunities in the data are really important. And then finally understanding the technology that you'll use to drive the insights. Is it gonna be just Excel and you have one analyst doing the work? Or do you wanna develop an enterprise-wide solution where you have sort of this HR for HR um, sort of system in place where you might use some sort of external vendor uh, to, to drive sort of insights? So, uh, where to start? I think um, if, if, you know, if you really are an organization really is serious about this, to start with the end in mind. Um, if, if that's not enough and if an organization wants to test the waters, then I suggest just doing small pilot projects, something really small that could potentially demonstrate the impact of, of the work that, um, that this function or team has the potential to do. So, you know, what's a low hanging fruit? What's, a, what's an organizational challenge that the that the company or the people team might not have a lot of insight into that data could, could potentially provide, um, you know, sort of insight into that missing gap that, that exists in the organization. And so, yeah, about, about that pilot, about that low hanging fruit, 
what do you reckon with your experience is the um, kind of questions that pilots should typically be looking for to get answered? Would it be uh, what people will we need in five years? Would it be something similar? What, what do you think in your experience content wise would be a good question to ask in that situation? Yeah. What, what do we understand that is actually actionable? Right. So um, sometimes it's, it's, it's interesting to go and analyze a lot of data and you know, sort of gain some insight into what's what's happening in the workforce. But if there's nothing that you can actually change from that output of, of an analysis, then it's more of a nice to, to know than a need to have. But if there's if there's pieces uh, of of work or parts of the output of analysis that actually can be actioned on, in other words, if you identify um, sort of the key drivers of attrition in your organization and those drivers relate to benefits in the organization. Well, you could do something with the company's benefits that could then influence attrition. So definitely when we're, when we're looking at sort of pilot projects, think about uh, projects that uh, can be actioned on, that you could actually do something tangible with that can change some, some aspect or, or outcome in the workforce. Um, and so, you know, the questions that you would want to ask then are, you know, um, is there a risk um, of the workforce not being able to meet sort of our, our as it is today, our future sort of strategy? And that's always a good place to start because then you can say, well, we know what our future strategy is, um, I hope. <laughs> um, and does, does then um, our people strategy align to, to that sort of future corporate strategy? And then if not, what, why? And what do we need to understand in our workforce today to be able to ensure that we, we do have that alignment. So that's another really good question to ask. And then past that, you can, you can think about questions that are, are more narrow in scope, scope such as we know have an, we have an aging workforce. How much of our workforce might be getting set to leave due to attrition in the next you know, two to three years? That's a pretty simple analysis, but you know, maybe 80% of your workforce is in their late fifties and getting ready to retire soon. Um, now we have to think about you know, knowledge sharing, knowledge transfer, and, and a lot of this backfill. So questions like this um, that are not, from a data perspective, too difficult to answer can be super powerful in terms of, of you know, turning the lights on for a lot of people that didn't realize the potential power and impact of, of using data. All right, good. Seems like um, I've run through all of the questions that popped into my head. So I don't know if there's anything that you still uh, would like to share with HR managers, some advice, things you learned along the way? Yeah, I think that a couple couple things that are worth, worth mentioning is that, um, you know, understand that when it comes to getting into this space that it is, it's a journey. So it's, it's gonna take time. It's not something there where you're gonna start doing more strategic um, database analyses and decision-making and you're gonna see uh, you know, an immediate impact overnight. It's, it's more of a mentality shift. So yes, you'll start to make better decisions, but it's, it's, it's this whole shift towards getting away from making decisions that are based on your intuition and, um, you know, seem right to making decisions that are not only based with, on your intuition and experience, but also based on data, right? So it, it takes time. So that's one thing. The second thing is leadership support. It's really, really imperative that if you're gonna do this, that it's not done in the silo, that your leaders fully support it, that your leaders understand the value of it, and that your leaders are gonna use this data. Um, and so to that end, it's, it's, if you're gonna go down this exercise, I think that it's really important that you, you bring those leaders along uh, and ideally have their sort of support right from the start, uh, because that'll make sort of the change management piece you know, much easier. Um, it's something else that's not static. You have to continually revisit your assumptions and that you have to uh, ensure that you understand how the dynamic nature of you know, business changes both internally and externally. You have to understand what uh, a lot of those drivers are internally, but also externally, right? So that's really important. Um, and it's also really impor important uh, to, to understand you know, that it really is something that is cross-functional and that the more that this is a piece of work in the organization that sits across the organization and that is um, valued and has inputs from all the functions, 
the more powerful that the data becomes and and the more that it, it no longer becomes <clears throat> just some you know sort of science project that hr is doing but a real part of the business so those are just a couple of, of sort of parting tips that that i would leave you with um you know and, and the other and i guess one more piece is <clears throat> you know typically in hr this has not been a core competency that a lot of hr practitioners have which is to say you know doing data analysis but it doesn't have to be something that is really intimidating it can be something that you know hr practitioners start out slowly start to learn little bits and pieces of get some of those quick wins that i alluded to earlier and, and start to demystify how how uh, data analytics can be used in hr and in the business and uh, you know just gain a little bit of confidence <clears throat> it's something else that can be hugely powerful yeah because some hr people are like uh, my uh, fellow students were about math uh, yeah. in high school you know just because it was a formula people started panicking <laughs> yes but, but it's yes. not because it's data an uh, analysis that it needs to be daunting yeah. I see what you mean. All right, Ross, thank you very much for uh, joining me. Thank you very much for your uh, honesty and the answers to the question. And uh, we'll see each other soon, I guess. Okay, thanks a lot, Ernie, and uh, good luck with everything. Yeah, with the football match as well. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. All right, bye, -bye. bye now.